Hi, this is Shanna with FlorabellaCollection.com, and today I'll be demonstrating how I edited this image using the Florabella Color Play Actions for Photoshop and Photoshop Elements. Today I'm working in CS5, but there's also a video for Photoshop Elements. So I'm going to be using the Color Play Actions. The set is large and very versatile. It's really like two sets in one. You can accomplish uh, clean, crisp, colorful edits, deep, rich rustic, earthy edits, uh, both in color and black and white, vintage, soft, hazy, really you can do it all with this set. And the set comes with um, several different bases and artistic add-ons and also um, some special workflow tools and brushes. Uh, for a limited time, it also includes some bonus black and white vintage film and emulsion actions. So today, here is our image that we're going to be working with, and this is the final product. Uh, we'll be using a few different tools to accomplish that. But first, let's look at the unedited image, and let's look for some obvious um, imperfections or flaws that we want to remove real quick before we start. Um, a couple things jump out at me. I see a branch and a little bokeh here that looks like it's kind of popping out of her head, so I want to remove that. Another distraction um, is this something really dark here in the grass. So the first thing I always do is I'm going to right click and duplicate layer and I'm going to grab my patch tool and I'm just going to loosely draw around that dark spot. I'm going to drag it to another spot that I think will um, do a good job. I'm going to do it again here of covering that up so it, it doesn't draw your eye there. And here we have this branch, same thing. I'm just going to draw a loose selection around it. And I'm going to take it over to a spot that looks better. Perfect. And the only other thing here is a couple loose hairs. It's not that big of a deal, but I'm just going to go ahead and grab those and drag them over. So that's already better. Now I'm going to flatten and we'll start. Today I'm going to be starting with a clean base. So I just select and click the play arrow. And this um, all-in-one action is a great clean edit. It brightens up, adds a little bit of contrast. It has some highlight protection and shadow brightening and clarifying built in. It also has an automatic uh, black and white conversion that you can click on or off. And um, you can go into the actual action and brighten, darken, add some soft rosiness. There's so much you can do. I can probably edit this image entirely just with this action. Um, you can add some soft rosiness. Here's some more warmth. Um, brighten up your midtones. A little bit more contrast. You could do a lot. Here is your soft color pop to make it more colorful. It's a little too much green. Um, but for now, let me go to my history panel. I'm going to um, just start with a clean base straight out of the box. So I just ran the clean base and that's all that's been done here. Um, I want to go for this kind of earthy, more rustic look in this image. So I'm going to opt for rosewood. I run rosewood first and automatically that adds a little bit of drama and depth and tone. Um, next, I think I'm going to go a little earthier and add earth right on top. You don't need to flatten. I don't need to do anything. Um, that's a little too brownish matte for me. I know it's a popular look right now, yeah. but I'm going to take that down to maybe around, I don't know, 42%. Another thing I can do is I'm, I'm going to go down here and just brighten it up a little bit down into my clean base. I'm going to take that up to about uh, 40 or so. And um, there are a couple vignettes in this special tools section. There's Midnight and Mink. Um, let me just show you Mink really quick. Mink is, is dark brown. There's already some brown tones here. So before, yeah, I think I'm going to go for Midnight. Midnight will add some um, blue in the shadows and give it a real kind of edgy look. Okay, I'm going to keep that at about 
I don't know, around 50%. And now what I'm noticing is that I like it to pop more and be more colorful. There's a couple ways I can achieve that with the color playset. I can just run color pop. Let's try that. And that's um, just a little bit too colorful. I'm going to take it down maybe about 28%. Now, if you open the arrow, um, you can see all the layers within this, this group. And you can do the same and adjust any one of the other actions as well. But the color pop, I really love because um, the color pop, ha you can neutralize the color. You can um, make it richer and deeper. You can add vibrance. I think I'm going to bump the vibrance a little bit. You can saturate it more, pop the color. You can dull your reds. You can dull your yellows. Um, a lot of people don't like really yellow grass. Watch what happens when I dull the yellows. Take it all the way up. The, the green becomes more soft green rather than so yellow. Um, but I kind of liked it the way it was. So I'm going to take it back down to five. Um, you can dull your greens. You can dull your reds. That helps with skin tones a lot. Um, but let's just keep it at that for now. Or rather than using the color pop action, you can also use your color brush. It's in the brushes section down below. And the color brush will end up with a black mask, which means you can't tell the difference whether you click the action on or off because the black mask is covering the entire effect. You have to paint it on. And you will see that you also have, you know, dulling your reds, dulling your greens, your richer, deeper, everything within that action. But you need to grab your white brush and I'm set to white. I'm going to choose one of my nice soft round brushes. Okay, and I'm just going to start painting on the color here. I'm going to bring my opacity to 100 so you can see. And this is a great option if you want, if you don't want to add color at all to the skin. Um, you just want to add color all the way around. And avoid your skin areas. Or you can selectively add uh, color where you want it. Okay, um, but for this image, I think I'm going to go back and use my color pop. Because I liked that it, it made the skin tones a little richer. I keep that at about 30%. Okay, another tool from ColorPlay that I use on almost every one of my portraits is the blush brush. And you just I'm just going to click a couple times because I'm going to show you what else you can do with the blush brush. Now, she already has some pretty um, red lips, so I'm not even going to touch her lips. But I'm just going to go ahead and paint on some rosier cheeks. Okay, I'm going to decrease the opacity a little bit. And then I'm going to go to my second blush brush, and I'm going to show you that you can use it on greens to add a little bit of autumn or color to your greens, just kind of warms it up. I think that looks pretty. Something else I notice is that her lace top um, is blue. And that could be because of the mink vignette, I'm not sure, or maybe it just photographed blue. But I have a neutralizer brush. And the neutralizer brush I use a lot on my daughter Sophie's hair when um, her hair picks up blue tones or, or tones from the grass or her surroundings. And what it will do is it will just take the tone right out of that black lace and make it look more neutral and not so blue. I'm going to raise the opacity of my brush. So... Okay, and I can play with the opacity. See, there's blue, and it just takes it right out. Okay, and keep that at about 20%. Now, at any point, you can convert to black and white, but if you do now, you're going to have your blush brush on top, and that's not a look that we want to go for in today's day and age. So I would just drag your black and white base above if you want to opt for black and white. So the next thing I can do, if I wish, is I can do a little non-destructive dodging and burning. 
Now, obviously, I don't have to do all of these things. I'm just kind of showing you some of the tools that come with the color play set. So um, this action runs a light brush and a dark brush. I'm on the light brush now. And you can just kind of use this to brighten up the skin, brighten up the center of your image. It's a little too much. And similarly, the dark brush, you can use that to add a little bit more vignetting if you wish. Okay, I think it has enough already though. Okay, and the final thing that I will do is just go back into my clean base and maybe warm up my image a little bit with the warming filter layer. Up my contrast maybe. Add a little soft rosiness to it. And brighten it up some more if you wish. I like my images pretty bright. And that's it. The before and the after. And finally, if you want, you can add a texture. So I'm going to go down to my texture set three. And um, this set has quite a few textures. Comes with some bonus textures and cloud overlays and vintage postcard. Um, today I think I'm going to choose burnished. And what I do is I'm just going to go to my folder with my textures. I'm just going to drag it into Photoshop. Drag it on top. Use my handles to resize. Put it completely over my image. And I'm going to choose soft light. And that's a little too textury and a little too warm. Uh, but I really love what this texture does to the background. And if you find that there still is too much tone, you can go ahead and um, go to Image, Adjustments, can desaturate it all together. That makes the texture black and white. But if you want to add a little bit of tone right afterwards, go to Edit, Fade, Desaturate. It'll fade whatever you last did so you can see it at its full strength of tone. And I think I'll just take it about halfway. And that looks good to me. And this is um, burnished at 62% on soft light. Okay, so that's before and after. It just adds a little visual interest. You could also try the overlay. I would likely bring it down a little bit. Overlay's a little stronger. Now, if you want to remove the texture from her skin, we have an all-in-one texture action, which will do that for you. Or um, what you can do... There's several different ways to do it, and I'll be doing more texture videos, but um, take your texture to normal at 100% opacity, grab your dropper tool, and you're going to just sample one of the colors from your texture. See, I have that in my foreground. I'm going to take it back down to soft light. I had it at, what, 60, 70% or something. And I'm just going to paint with my paintbrush with that color right over her skin at 100%. And that will remove any texture from her skin. It's not a fast rule that you have to remove texture from skin, um, but many people like to. Okay? So the Florabella color play actions and the rest of our sets and textures can be found at florabellacollection.com. Thanks.